Greetings. It's a pleasure to interact with you today. My name is Ambassador Vishnu Prakash. I retired as India's High Commissioner to Canada in 2016. I've also had the honor of flying the Indian flag as the ambassador in South Korea, serving as the official spokesperson of the Ministry of External Affairs, being the Consul General of India in Shanghai. I have also been fortunate to have served in important capitals like Tokyo, New York, uh, Islamabad, Cairo, and so and Moscow. Today, I'm going to speak on the very important subject of para diplomacy in India. I will certainly contextualize it uh, to present some of the the examples from countries which are have taken the lead in para diplomacy talk about the practice the positives and the tremendous potential that obtains in making every state a stakeholder and in involving them actively in para diplomacy para diplomacy is a growing phenomena in india as well as in developed federal and large countries the world over I've been fortunate to witness the practice firsthand in can countries like Canada, South Korea, and China, which are really wedded to the concept of para diplomacy. Now, what is para diplomacy? It's also called subnational diplomacy. In very simple terms, para diplomacy means interface, interaction, or engagement between regions or states, let's say, and or local and city governments with their foreign counterparts or with other entities. Even for example, if an Indian university were to engage with a foreign university, uh, it becomes para diplomacy in, 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 uh, in some ways. Now, the practice of course varies dramatically from state to state, from country to country, uh, depending on its structure, depending on uh, its size, its history. Canada takes a crown in terms of para diplomacy and has constitutionally empowered even its provinces like Quebec and British Columbia to conduct economic diplomacy independently. They have set up offices in other countries and conduct parallel economic diplomacy with the federal government. Now, what is the need of para diplomacy? It promotes cooperative and competitive federalism. The federal government or the central government has so many things up on its plate in today's world, which is a very complicated world, which is a very competitive world. The central government should and can look at the big picture, create an enabling environment, and then bring in the states as partners to give them a stake in development of economic ties, cultural ties, people to people ties, promote uh, health, education, infrastructure, and so on. So it makes states an equal partner in the social economic development, which is the buzzword today. The need has also been fueled by the emphasis on connectivity development, attracting foreign direct investment, because the investment dollar is finite and the needs the world over are, are much more. So there is a competition. And if the stakeholders engage directly in attracting FDI, uh, there is a competition among states. And here I'm talking of India. Certainly, uh, it will bring the, their best to the fore. They'll be able to present different investment situations and be able to uh, optimize in terms of attracting foreign direct investment. And then there's a question of uh, enhancing transborder security, uh, where again, the states have a, a role to play. Now the trend is facilitated by globalization. The world is shrinking, communications have become faster, information is at the command with uh, the, no, the non-central or non-federal player, sub-national players. 
there is a relaxation of diplomatic norms and then it's the standing of india and the indian diaspora which makes a big difference and especially in the economic sphere there are certain states which have taken the lead for example uh, states like gujarat punjab and goa have been conducting investment summits uh, every second year and they have become good platforms to provide to showcase the investment opportunities in in india and they are being quite successful in attracting investments now there are various kinds of uh, para diplomacy or subnational diplomacy for the ease of reference i have bunched them in three categories first is the political and security aspects which uh, where the involvement of the states is important is pertinent in settling cross border security boundary and humanitarian issues let me give the example of uh, west bengal and our northeastern states now there was land boundary dispute or land boundary differences with bangladesh the differences lingered for decades but in 2015 at the encouragement of prime minister modi these states in question bangladesh uh, west bengal and our north eastern states along with the central government sat down with bangladesh they negotiated they discussed it and they were even parties to signing the agreement and we uh, there was it was successful so basically the idea is that when you bring bring in the states as stakeholders it makes things easier it makes move makes things faster and then the core of subnational diplomacy or para diplomacy is the socio economic aspects which i have touched upon promoting foreign direct investment trade education now india has uh, about 10 million to 12 million youngsters join the job market every year which means that 10 to 12 million youngsters need to be trained so for us to bring in the best practices of vocational training from uh, the countries all over the world for example canada where i have served in uh, are extremely useful energy we we need energy security science and technological cooperation so there are a host of areas where the direct user which is the states uh, if they come into the picture uh, they they can make uh, they can may be much more effective in promoting or forging meaningful cooperation and third category now is the outreach to the indian, indian diaspora uh, indian diaspora by some yardsticks we have the world's largest diaspora of more than 30 million and growing uh, we are attracting the largest remittances from uh, the world uh, which are diaspora sends from the world over close to 80 billion dollars last year and there are both kinds of uh, there are two kinds of uh, members of the diaspora the blue collared workers who are in the in the arab world some 7 million of them or even more and then the white collared highly educated uh, experts or technocrats who are in countries like the us canada us uh, uk australia now they want to now they have and they are by the way very f they are affluent in the us the indian diaspora has become the richest diaspora uh, in the country and they are at the forefront in all, all walks of life economic life uh, in in the financial world in the it world and they are the educational world and they are wanting to now bring back something to india they are wanting to bring back their experiences they are wanting to give something to their motherland so and they are uh, they welcome uh, if they are very happy if uh, the state or the cities or the central government reaches out to them so this is yet another example of uh, para diplomacy which can benefit the country now what is the best way forward given our uh, structure the best way to to promote para diplomacy is twinning of states or developing state to state relations and 
I, from my experience, have found that there's no better way than the chief minister himself taking the lead. Because once the chief minister takes the lead, the message goes down uh, to all branches of the state government. Now, whether the chief minister leads the delegation to the state in another country with which the state has been twinned, or receives the delegation uh, headed by his counterpart, uh, the it, there are numerous examples where when state chief ministers have taken the lead and even more importantly, their successors have taken the process forward. We have uh, seen that it has been quite effective. The nodal ministry for twinning of states is now the Ministry of External Affairs and it is precisely the state's division. It's a new division which was cr created at the behest uh, literally at the behest of Prime Minister Modi, who has been an avid practitioner of uh, state diplomacy, of, of uh, para diplomacy. And the state's division was created in the Ministry of External Affairs, headed by a joint secretary in 2015. And again, very interestingly, for the first time ever in India, each Indian ambassador has been asked to adopt the state. And he continues to be the brand ambassador of the state for the rest of his tenure, rest of his career, whichever country is posted in. And that becomes uh, very useful for states and for the heads of mission in terms of uh, reaching out to different uh, interest groups, different countries, different cities, different states. And um, those states which have taken advantage of or used their ambassadors, reached out to their ambassadors, have uh, been quite effective in promoting para diplomacy. Uh, similarly, we are trying to bring, when I say we, the Ministry of External Affairs is trying to bring all uh, branches of uh, branches pertaining to the Ministry of External Affairs be it uh, the, the passport offices, be it uh, the immigration offices, uh, under one roof, the Indian cultural centers. Uh, and we are in the process of establishing Videsh Bhavans, or uh, Videsh is foreign, foreign, uh, foreign affairs related uh, building, foreign affairs re related centers. And the first of which was inaugurated in Mumbai in August 2017, by and by the idea is to have a Videsh Bhavan in every state. And uh, similarly, there are Ministry of External Affairs branch secretariats, which are uh, where a senior ministry, a diplomat from the Ministry of External Affairs uh, uh, leads the branch secretariat to facilitate uh, engagement with the, with the states, with the cent between the states and the center, and also assist the states in para diplomacy. So uh, they will also be housed in the Videsh Bhavans as and when it is established. And currently we have branch secretariats in Chennai, Kolkata, Mumbai, Hyderabad, and Guwahati. Then there's a the question of twinning of cities. And here the nodal ministry is Ministry of Urban Development. I'm afraid the picture is not as healthy here. Uh, the Economic Times had an article in July 2015, uh, which co says that in 2015, India had over 100 sister city partnerships, but mostly remained largely ornamental, except in some cases for fostering closer cultural bonds. Now, why is it so? It is because of our structure. In most of the countries or many countries where the sister twinning of cities is effective, you have executive mayors who are powered, who are elected mayors. For in our country, uh, mayors are more of a ceremonial position. They have limited powers with the executive powers vested in the municipal commissioner appointed by the chief minister or by the state head. So in the Indian context, uh, having sister city relationship is not very effective. And in the, uh, it is much better to go in for twinning of states and certainly associate the cities which are interested in promoting para-diplomacy. 
Now, I have served in China and China is one country which has mastered the art of paradiplomacy. Uh, they have, at the, uh, till two years ago, three years ago, they had more than 2,000 sister city engagements and they have unleashed a competition between cities. They are trying to reach out to, to their counterparts the world over and try to, to gain the best practices, forge economic relations, forge culture, cultural relations. And that is what is required in India also to, to unleash competition, healthy competition between, uh, the, between the states, between the cities, so that um, they try to, to put their best foot forward they try to learn from the best practices and uh, generate interest and healthy development in the state. In concluding thoughts, uh, paradiplomacy is the need of the hour. And I'm glad to say that India, under the, the, uh, the pre especially under the present government, is uh, focusing very strongly on paradiplomacy. The big thing is that we have been engaged in paradiplomacy for a long time. We didn't call it so. But there was a sense of ad hocism. It depended on uh, a certain chief minister or a certain mayor or a certain local leader. But now with the steps that I've enumerated above, we are trying to put a structure to it. And once there is an institutional framework, things will become that much uh, more effective. But the continuity, I would again emphasize, is important because uh, the threads need to be picked up by the, uh, just as there is, when there's an agreement amongst nations, regardless of who is the head of government uh, of the day, agreements amongst nations are honored. Similarly, to make paradiplomacy effective, it has to, uh, there has to be a continuity. And one very good example, for example, of paradiplomacy has been since 2007, the agreement between the state of Bavaria and Karnataka. Uh, and there they are focusing on commerce, industry, information technology, tourism. Uh, Bavarian companies like uh, BMW and Audi are in India. Wipro has, uh, has gone to Bavaria. Bavaria set up their office in Karnataka. So these are the kind of, but again, it, uh, it is effective because since 2007, successive state governments have seen the merit in engaging with Bavaria. So, uh, there, is, there are a couple of constraints though. And one such constraint is that regional and local governments are not recognized actors in international law. And, uh, the, their activities are also constrained by international and domestic legal framework. But as uh, we globalize, as the world shrinks, as communication becomes easier, as travel becomes easier, and uh, now that we have the, uh, we can use the internet and the digit digital world effectively, th there is a, there, the difference between one state and the other, one country and the other, will be determined by which country is more effective in paradiplomacy. And I see that India has, uh, has grasped the message. And in the coming months and years, one would see much more effective, sustained, and mutually beneficial paradiplomacy. I'm contactable on these numbers. Uh, my, my Twitter ID, my email ID. I'll be happy to be uh, to answer questions if there are any. And last but not the least, I would express my appreciation to ET government for affording me this platform, this very important platform to reach out to you, to share with you my thoughts of uh, on paradiplomacy, and also invite you to share your thoughts and let uh, use your good offices to, uh, to let the interested people know about the new structure that is being put in place to make uh, paradiplomacy even more prevalent. I wish you all, all the very best.